Hi, uh, today I want to take the uh, ADHD test. I've heard a lot about it and I also have a strong opinion about it. First of all, they call it attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And I don't believe it's a disorder. I believe it's an enhancement, a gift really. So let's get into the test and I'll give you all my comments about it. This is a test by uh, Psych Central. I have it right here on this phone. Uh, it was reviewed by Mark S. Lenner, MD. So let's assume it's an okay test. You should never self-diagnose using an online test. If you feel that you may or may not have some kind of condition, you should just see an expert. But let's just do the test for fun because I'm going to comment a lot on the questions in this questionnaire that I obviously don't agree with. First question. How often do you have difficulty sustaining your attention while doing something for work, school, a hobby, or a fun activity, e.g. remaining focused during lectures, lengthy reading, or conversations? Um, I'm going to answer sometimes. I have some difficulty with this. But notice in the question, they equate work and school to the, having a hobby or a fun activity. Now, in case of work and school, um, you are often in a position where you are told what to do. You are ordered to sit still, be quiet, listen, listen to the teacher, listen to the mentor or your, your whoever, your examiner, and you are supposed to go along with this. But this is something very different from hobby or fun activity, right? So how can you put this in the same question? I find it strange because um, obviously if you are in school, in a school setting, and you are to uh, spend an hour doing chemistry equations where you have to uh, you know fit the molecules and so on and you have to do this while you don't really care about it assuming this topic doesn't interest you at all whatsoever no wonder you may find find it difficult to sustain your attention for something you don't care to do this should be very different for a hobby or a fun activity which is what you should choose because you like to do it. But I can imagine now, say you're a nine-year-old and your mother puts you on, I don't know, handicraft or something on, on Wednesday afternoons, and you have to do handicraft and you don't really like it. It's something your mom or your parent or someone picked it for you and you don't like to do it. Of course, you will have trouble sustaining your attention. Uh, same thing with a fun activity. What do, they, what do they mean by a fun activity? Because it's ordered to be fun, like, Say you're at a, a school festival and you are ordered to go on stage and uh, act the part in a certain play. But what if you don't care about that play or the part? Then, of course, you're going to have difficulty sustaining your attention. I mean, you should make a really clear distinction here between caring about what you're doing, being interested in what you're doing, feeling that this is advancing myself. And on the other hand, things like work, office work, school work ordered hobbies or, uh, you know, overly construed fun activities that you have to, that you are ordered to participate in or else, right? So regardless of this, yeah, obviously at work, at school, when I'm in a setting where I have to do something that I don't really, don't really care about, that doesn't really interest me, yeah, obviously I have difficulty sometimes focusing on, on you know, on what is being said. So next question then. How often are you easily distracted by external stimuli, like something in your environment or unrelated thoughts? I suppose sometimes too often. I might even say often, but what do you mean by distraction? Like, do you mean like I literally stop and forget what I was doing? No, it's not like that. I don't forget what I was doing. I may pay attention to something over here or over there or my phone or whatever, but then I go back to where I was, right? So that's why I say I will give the answer sometimes. I do have a lot of unrelated thoughts, but still they don't really distract me from what I'm doing, considering that what I'm doing is interesting, such as I'm doing this podcast right now. If there's noise outside, I will just block it out, ignore it. Uh, right now, I don't see what things might distract me, why, why my phone might ring or something. Then I would stop and we might answer the phone. But other than that, in this environment where I'm in right now, external stimuli, well, I've got the computer, I got a laptop over here where it shows me the audio coming in. So I see those, those waveform audio things. So I may peek over there, but it doesn't distract me from the fact that I'm doing the podcast. So I would say 
I am easily distracted sometimes, but it doesn't really doesn't really pull me away from what I was trying to do. You know, I'm still doing the podcast. How often do you avoid, dislike, or are reluctant to engage in tasks that require sustained mental effort or thought? Uh, I would say sometimes. Um, this is probably because, as I said in the first question, if I'm in a, in a position where I have to do something that I don't care about, that I don't find interesting, that is boring to me, of course I will be reluctant to do these things because it requires sustained mental effort or thought. But do you notice there is a trap in this question? Just because I may dislike certain activities and I cannot bring the mental effort for certain activities, that doesn't mean I don't have any mental effort for other activities. You know, uh, a while back, a few years back, I picked up a, a mountain biking hobby. And part of the mountain biking hobby is that I had to learn to repair my own bicycle because I didn't want to take it to the bike shop all the time. I wanted to learn how to do it myself. And I was very much engaged with putting in tons of mental effort into this uh, bike repairing, you know, fixing my gears, fixing my brakes, redoing my brakes and so on, replacing uh, brake fluid. I would go through all these kind of activities, learning how to do these things because it was very interesting to me. I really had a motivation to do it because I cared about that bike a lot and I cared about going out into the woods and, and racing. So, so I didn't have any trouble sustaining mental effort, but I know that in many other cases where, for example, I have to sit through something that I find really boring, then I just can't bring myself to listen to it. I have this problem, for example, when, I, when you have these very lengthy videos by Jordan Peterson or Joe Rogan, I can't watch those. Those are too long, two, three hours of, you know, it, it's just too, too damn boring to me. It's just not interesting to me to have to watch uh, people talk, especially if what they talk about is too boring. I keep my own videos short, usually around 15 minutes, and I try to pack them full, full of uh, interesting new insights and information to keep people entertained. I actually, I actually expect other people to do, that, to do that for me as well. I find it quite offensive if somebody would start talking to me for a whole hour about something really boring and they never sense that I'm bored. They never sense that they need to make it more interesting or just wind it up, round it up. Your next question. How often do you have trouble listening to somebody even when they are speaking directly to you like your mind is somewhere else? Yeah. <laughs> I have this often. I was just talking about this. I have this very often when people are talking to me you know, one or two minutes, no problem. 30 seconds, no problem. But if they start talking to me more than five minutes and the thing they are talking about or the manner in which they are talking to me about something is just too damn boring, woof, my mind goes all over the place. That is simply what I have. Uh, and I don't think that's... Is that my disorder? Or is it perhaps that the other person is just boring? Have you met these kind of people? When they, when they talk to you, they talk to you uh, in a sequential manner, as in as follows. I'll give you an example. Well, I went to the store today, and on my way to the store, I met my grandma. And my grandma told me about my uncle who was dying, but he didn't die. And then I went to the store anyway, and I said bye to grandma. And then I went to pick up a carton of milk, but they were out of milk. And so I went to the store clerk to ask if they have any more milk in the back. And they say, no, they don't have any more milk in the back. And then I decided that I was not going to buy milk and I bought some water instead. It's like, have you met people like that who give you their, their day in such a sequential manner? To me, I'm listening to what, what is the point here? What is the clue of the story you are telling me? Are you telling me something that is just your boring day? Why are you telling me about your boring day? Why would you even think that I care to know about your boring day? You went to the store to get milk. You met your grandma and your grandma told you about your, your uncle was dying, but he didn't die. And then you went to the store, and you got your milk, but there was no milk and you asked for milk and there was no milk. And then you got water. What do I care? What the fuck do I care? I don't care about your boring ass life. It's not, it's not in my interest to spend, you know, 30 minutes of my life listening to your boring story. So to answer your question, yeah, I often get distracted and that is, that is because most people are just boring. They don't have much to say. You know, that's why I, I prefer watching an hour on TikTok 
than listening to random people on, to, on TikTok because these NPCs out there, man, they've got nothing interesting to say. Okay, next question. How often do you have difficulty in organizing an activity or task needing to get done? Poor time management fails to meet deadlines or have difficulty managing sequential tasks. I'd say rarely because I, I do have the ability to plan uh, tasks in sequence. Like in the morning, I get up, I say, okay, I got to prepare my gym bag because I'm going to go to gym usually in the evenings. I prepare the bag in the morning so I have it done, right? And then I have to you know, take a shower, do all these things, you know. Uh, I think I am quite competent at doing sequential tasks, but only toward things that I care about, obviously. If I would, would be ordered to do, uh, say, at university, we have these uh, uh, projects where you had to do a project with a group of people, and it was very sequential. You had to follow a sort of, uh, you know, program. That could get very boring to me, especially if the topic was of no interest to me. Sometimes even they ordered us, to, the teachers, the professors, they would tell us to do a fake project first to learn how to do it and then do the real project. Now, even if I were interested in the real project, the actual thing, by having to do a fake project about some fake topic, that would bore me out of my mind and I would not be able to do it. I would simply wouldn't care about doing it. And then I wouldn't think of managing my time and meeting deadlines for a fake project, like a pretend project before you do the real one. Th that to me feels like such nonsense that, uh, you know, why are you putting me through this? So I'd say I do re rarely have this problem, but not always. So how often do you fail to give close attention to details or make careless mistakes in things such as schoolwork, at work, or during other activities? I'd say sometimes I make mistakes in detail. But again, it comes down to the same thing over and over again. If the thing I am doing is boring, yeah, then I will not pay much attention to it because my mind will be elsewhere. I will be dreaming of explorations and climbing mountains and, and you know, racing my mountain bike. I will be thinking of other things that are more interesting to do. Um, but I am, obviously, uh, I am at the same time perfectly capable of uh, really engaging myself with details and spend an hour or two or sometimes a whole day or more really zoning in on the details and getting them exactly right. Uh, in turn, uh, we were just talking about sequential tasks. This podcast requires a bunch of sequential tasks. I have two cameras right now. I've got the audio. I then have to edit the audio to make sure that the sound quality is exactly the way I want it to be, add some filtering, do some mastering and equalizing. This is sequential. And then I, I have to cut the video and then map the audio to it, you know, and then cut the video and the audio simultaneously to get it right. So yeah, there's a, I am perfectly capable of doing detailed things and pay attention to the detail, concern, considering that it interests me. If it doesn't interest me, why would I care, right? At this point, I already have the feeling that a lot of these questions are about are you able to be an obedient, submissive slave who will do as he's told? Can you do what you are ordered to do? Basically, sit still, pay attention to detail, do all the tasks. And, but they're all, what they really mean is, in terms of society and school and office and work, is are you able to do these things while working on very boring activities that you don't really care about because you're ordered to do them or paid to do them? Now, in that case, I can't do them. How often do you forget to do something you do all the time, such as missing an appointment or paying a bill? And again, sometimes. I do sometimes forget something I usually do all the time, yeah. Uh, sometimes I forget to brush my teeth. <laughs> uh, I, I do miss appointments once in a while because, um, to me, those are the, the sort of appointments that I miss are the ones that I don't care about. <laughs> it's when I feel frustrated, but, oh, I have to go do that. You know, it's like I don't want to do it. It's not something that is beneficial to me. It's not good for me. It's just frustrating. How often do you lose, misplace, or damage something that's necessary in order to get things done? Like your phone, eyeglasses, paper. Yeah, again, sometimes uh, I have this, uh, I have these ear pods to listen to music sometimes. And sometimes I want to take them with me so I can study uh, languages on Duolingo or something at, uh, at a cafe. And then I forget to bring the ear pods. That happens. I bring the phone and I forget the ear pods. Or sometimes I never lose my keys because I have rituals, man. I put the keys in the lock so I never lose them. 
So when I go outside, I always have to turn the key to go outside. So I always have the keys in my hand and I never lose them. Uh, with my phone, I sometimes misplace my phone, but I find it quite easily. Yeah, same with eyeglass. I've got sunglasses. I don't quite lose them, though. Sunglasses, no, I, no, I don't lose sunglasses for some reason. Paperwork, yeah. <laughs> uh, I recently had to pay some kind of electric bill, and luckily I photographed the bill, but then I used the paper for some other task and then destroyed it and threw it away. <laughs> Uh, so I lost that one. So, How often do you have trouble following through on instructions or failing to finish schoolwork, chores, or duties in the workplace? E.g., you start a task but quickly lose focus and are easily just sidetracked. Again, I'd say sometimes. Man, man, all these questions to me come down to the same thing. Yeah, if, it's, if the thing I'm doing is boring, I may have trouble finishing the instructions if I don't like what I'm supposed to do. But if I do like what I'm supposed to do, I have no problem following a certain set of instructions to achieve a certain goal. Uh, no, I'm, I suppose as a, as a teenager, I never did homework. I basically didn't care about doing the homework because I also didn't really care about the lectures and the, and the classes we were having. I didn't care about these things. I didn't care about chemistry. I didn't care about you know, biology. I just didn't care about these things. I do have this problem, though. Actually, I'm going to say often here because I very often do start a task and then lose focus and I'm sidetracked. But that is only because I start so many different things to try them out. I'm what is called a sampler. I sample life. I try this restaurant, that one, and that one, and that one before I decide to go to one restaurant more often because I like it. Uh, the same thing with... Um, uh, having a drink at a bar or something. I try out many different bars before I make one the one I frequent more often because I, I sample life. Same with learning languages. I sampled almost all the languages on Duolingo, I, meaning I started almost all of them for a, few, for a bit and then to settle on a certain number of languages that I care to continue learning, which I am actually doing. And so... I do start a lot, but you see, the question doesn't really care about it, right? The question only gets, do you start a lot of things and then lose focus and are sidetracked? Yeah, I have that a lot, but it's really only because I start so much, because I'm, I'm so compelled. I'm such a curious fellow who wants to figure things out and try things out. Same with sports, for example. When I picked up that mountain bike hobby I told you about, I had tried other sports. I had tried swimming. I had tried uh, archery. I had tried several other sports that summer. And then I, I settled on mountain biking. And then I stuck with mountain biking for several years. So it's not like, it's not like I try things out and I always quit. No, I try things out to see if they interest me. And then I discovered that archery, I didn't care about it. And swimming is fun. I like to go for a swim once in a while, but I don't want to make it my sport. I like mountain biking. That's my sport. Now I'm into uh, boxing and kickboxing. <laughs> no, no, seriously. At, uh, there's a public park near where I live where they have these two outdoor boxing bags, big bags. And so I, I started punching there and I find out something. I found out that I like that. I like throwing punches. Why shouldn't I go do that? So I'm going to do that once a week or so and stick with that for quite a while. And I also go to the gym, of course, three times a week, two times a week because I want to get big again, muscular again. How often are you unable to play or engage in leisurely activities quietly? <laughs> okay, I'd say sometimes, or actually often. By the way, what a strange question. If you are engaging in a leisurely activity, how on earth does that mean that you're supposed to do them quietly? Why, what do they mean by this? How often do you have difficulty waiting your turn, such as while waiting in line? Okay. This is one of the things that I have a massive problem with this. When I, like last, just yesterday, last night, I went to go shopping at the grocery store around 6 p.m. And there, I got just a few items because I didn't need that much. And then I started wanting to queue up and wow, the queue ran through like two thirds of the store. So guess what I did? And I know, I know myself well by now. I know I can't handle that. So guess what I did? I took my items, put them back where I found them, and I left the store. What I did was I did something else for an hour. So instead of waiting in the queue for 30 minutes, I just did something else for an hour. And then I came back. Actually, I came back around 8 p.m. 
or just a quarter to 8 p.m., just before closing time, got my items and rushed through the checkout because now there was no queue and I could go straight to the front of the, straight to the, uh, to the checkout. Why wouldn't you do that, though? We were just talking about time management skills, but think about this for a moment. What kind of a fucked up time management skill do you have when you accept waiting in a queue, waiting in line for 30 minutes or an hour, when you know you know you could just leave it and come back later when the queue is gone so you can do something else in the meantime? So talk about time management. You know, I think people who refuse to queue up and simply come back when the queue is gone and do something else in the meantime, those people are a lot better at time management, don't you think? My God. Apparently, this, they consider that a problem. I think it's just smart. How often do you feel like you're on the go, acting as if you're driven by a motor, e.g. you're unable to be or uncomfortable being still for an, un, for an extended period of time, such as in a restaurant or a meeting? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel that motor. Yeah, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm driven by a motor. I would say I am driven and I am the motor. So I'm not driven by a motor. That would be like an external force pushing me around. It's more like an internal force that is there that I want to use. If you're a Ferrari engine, should you be sitting still in a garage or should you be out on a racing track? That's right. You should be out on a racing track. So I would say often, I do often feel this intense drive to go and do something like going to the gym. By the time I'm going to gym, I really want to go to the gym because I really want to use that body for muscle, right? And, uh, you know, once a week I go over to the boxing, uh, boxing bag, I told you. Uh, I really want to go there. I have that drive. I would say I am the motor, and of course I want to use that. I'm not going to turn off the motor and hold it in a garage quietly for an extended period of time. Although in restaurants, in restaurants, I can be very patient in restaurants. If I would be, if I would be at a restaurant, ordered not to speak until my food was delivered, and, and it would take an hour for them to bring me my food. In that case, in that case, I would have a lot of trouble sitting still or staying there. I, I probably might even decide to just get up and leave. If I don't get my food in a restaurant within 30 minutes or preferably five minutes or 10 minutes, I will, I will seriously consider getting up and leaving. And I have done that sometimes if, if delivery wasn't fast enough. If it took, if I was at a place for like an hour waiting for my steak and it didn't come, I would just sneak out and fuck you. You know, you should have brought me my food. This is your job. This is your job as a restaurant to get me my food, right? I mean, if it takes too long, I would get up and leave. So, but is that a bad thing though? If you are somebody who does not accept being put on hold, you're not going to be on hold for two hours. You're just sitting there like a slave. On hold, beep, beep, or they play the music like ding, 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 ding. Would you really do that for two or three hours? Or would you just hang up and find another way to get what you want? You know? How often do you leave your seat in situations when remaining seated is expected, leaving your place in the office or workplace? Uh, I would say some between sometimes and often. So I'm going to say often. Um, well, I'm sitting in a seat right now. I'm not leaving. I'm just doing the podcast. So I don't have any. No, I'm not so distracted that I would have to leave this. Again, this is about, in my case, it's about me um, having to be in a situation where seating is expected. First question I have is why would I put myself in such a situation? Why would I ever want to be in a situation where seating is expected? You know, meaning meaning expected against my will, expected against without. For example, I can go to a concert, a two three hour concert, and sit it out, no problem. I go to uh, the opera sometimes, and these things can last two to five hours. But it's interesting if you see the actors. The singers on stage, you see their facial expens- uh, expression. And you see their facial expression. It's, it's, it's entertaining. It, it, it remains interesting to me, so I can keep doing that. Whereas, uh, I suppose there are plenty of situations where you're ordered to sit still, such as, for example, ah, 
when you're boarding an airplane and you've and you've got this pre-boarding thing where they pre-board you and then they just expect you to wait down the hallway for 30 minutes or sometimes an hour before the the doors to the plane finally open yeah yeah I have a lot of problem with that. I start walking around. I start doing other things. I start trying to make my life a bit more interesting because you put me in a situation where there's nothing to do that is boring. All I can do is just wait and wait and wait. And that I am allergic to. How often do you blurt out an answer before a question has been completed? <laughs> completing or completing another person's sentence or can't wait your turn in a conversation. I can wait my turn in conversations. Again, if the conversation is exciting, to me that would be a somewhat rapid fire conversation with multiple people where you can speak you know, easily and quickly. But I get the question. See, the problem with me is I often know what other people are going to say. And then I finish their sentences. And then you want to know, well, how do you know what other people were going to say? Because they tell me, how did you know what I was going to say? And I think this is quite, quite a large number of people are just these boring NPCs who think alike. So you know one of them, you know all of them. You figure one out, you figure them all out. You know what they're going to say. You know, uh, for example, if you would ask a Democrat voter, sir, ma'am, what do you think of diversity? And then they start answering as though they are original thinkers. Like they go like, well, diversity is a strength. Yeah, yeah I knew you were going to say that, you know, because they all say that and they all say the same thing. If you just happen to be a bit smarter than most other people, you can complete a lot of their sentences because a lot of people are boring NPCs. They speak about their daily lives. You know, uh, I met my grandma on the way to the store to get milk and the milk ran out, so I asked for water. But, you know, those people, you can finish their sentences because they are simple. You know, they're simple people. Why is this a problem? I'm going to say sometimes here because it's not that I do it often. I have learned, though, I have learned to let these people speak. But then, of course, I find a quick excuse like, sorry, I, have to re I really have to go now. I got work to do. And then I just leave them there. <clears throat> How often do you feel restless? Like you want to get out and do something often. Yeah, I, I feel this every day. I want to explore. I want to seek out adventures. I want to think of new adventures to do and plan for them and get the money. Yeah. Uh, I'm always up for doing something. This doesn't mean I don't rest at all. Of course, I rest after I've done an activity, after I've gone some boxing or after I've been to the gym. I can relax. I can rest on my couch, no problem. It's just that I cannot do that all day. If I would rest all day, every day, within one or two days, I will, be, I will get sick with myself. I have to go out and do something. I got to do something exciting. I notice now also that in the evenings, I like going for a walk in the evening, an evening walk, just through my neighborhood, just for 20 minutes or so, just so that I know that I've been outside. Sometimes you've been all inside, indoors all day, and I always want to get that walk in. That's when the lockdown came. There was a curfew in the Netherlands when I was living there. You weren't allowed to go outside after 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. or so, between 10 p.m. and 5 a.m., and and that was a problem to me because I always went for a walk before I go to sleep for the 20 minute walk, like walking myself, right? Some people walk their dog. I walk myself. I don't have a dog. So I just, I did it anyway. And it was actually illegal. They were going to fine you like 90 euros if they caught you outside in, within the curfew hours. Uh, but cops, no, I never saw any cops. So it was weird though. It was very weird that you have to break the law to be outside. Motherfucker, man. How often do you fidget with or tap your hands or feet or squirm in your seat? Well, I've been doing this the whole time. I've been moving my hands the whole time, right? Yeah. That is because probably because I want activity, uh, you know, shooting arrows or stabbing a spear or something. Maybe that's why you look for grabbing a knife to cut your enemy or whatever. I, I'd say, well, often probably. Yeah, I do have this. Yeah, I move my, I'm moving my feet right now. I'm, moving, I'm uh, you know, hopping my knee up and down right now. I do that often, yeah. Because I, I have the energy. Is that a bad thing? Is it bad to have energy? So how often do you find yourself talking excessively? <laughs> well, I'm doing this podcast primarily or partly because I have this intense desire to speak. Uh, I remember as a child, I was severely punished for using my voice, for speaking. I was not allowed to make those sounds coming from your mouth. My father would often uh, tell me I had to go play in the garage because he didn't want to hear me. 
And even when I did keep quiet, I was playing with my little toy cars on the floor or something and making wee 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 sounds. Or even if I was really quiet and just playing with the cars, even that was a problem to him. Yeah, is talking excessively. It's, it's just that in my case, because I was punished for talking as a child, I wasn't allowed to speak much and nobody really spoke much to me. And nobody really cared to know my thoughts about anything anyway. Not even my teachers in school. In, in school also, they just expect you to be quiet and sit still and follow orders and do your homework and follow the instructions. And that is what I call the slave society. I clearly am not a good fit between... Uh, the intended slave society, the rule-based the rule -based order where people, citizens, are supposed to be modern slaves who are told what to do, here's what to do, here are the instructions, follow the orders, sit still, be quiet, and don't bother your leadership. No, I'm going to bother the leadership. How often do you interrupt or intrude on others, such as butting into their conversation or taking over what others are doing? Yeah, I sometimes do that. Again, it comes down to the same thing over and over again. It's boredom. When I feel that people are boring, I will either take, out, take over a conversation and steer them to another direction, like let's go do something exciting. Or if people need to make a decision that I have to wait for, but they are talking about, the, the, you know, the, I met my grandma on the way to the store and I went to get some milk, but there was no milk and milk was out. And got well. Like if they keep talking like that, then I will like push them a bit. I will take over the conversation to get them to resolve a matter, get the solution in so I can move on because you're, I'm not here to spend my life waiting for you all the time. And then were several of the symptoms present prior to age 12? Yeah. I've had all of this since my childhood. Do the symptoms appear in at least two or more settings, school and home? Yeah, both of them, of course. So get results. Here, it says I, my score is 48 out of 58 total. So attention deficit disorder is likely. Now, if you've seen me, <coughs> if you've seen me here in front of this camera talking to you, do I have an attention deficit disorder? Did I, did I get up and leave there? Were like, who, who? Did I do that? You know? I didn't do that. I was pretty much focused on doing what I'm doing because I like what I'm doing right now. Yeah? If you would put me in a position where I have to do something that I don't like, I would not have been able to produce this video. I wouldn't have cared about it. I just couldn't do it. I've got other things on my mind. So that's why I, I dislike the phrase attention deficit disorder. I don't have an attention deficit. I've read more than a thousand books in my life. I started reading very early in life and I've read many books, lots, lots of nonfiction, also some fiction, uh, philosophy, history, geography, loads of things, geopolitics, loads of things, science, mathematics even. <clears throat> I've read loads of books and usually if a book is about two or three hundred pages, I will read that book in one go, but only if I find it interesting, right? Only if I find the book interesting, I can spend two or three hours undisturbed reading the book if I find it interesting. So what I do nowadays, I open a book and I read the first two pages to see if it's written well. Because if a book is not well written, then usually the person who thought of the book wasn't a very good thinker either. So I discard books that are not well written or that are actually boring to read or that basically are the work of an unintelligent mind. I would discard those books. I don't read them. That doesn't mean I can't keep attention. I don't have an attention deficit and it's not a disorder. So I don't like this phrase ADHD. That's what they'll call people like me. They say you have ADHD, but in reality, I don't have an attention deficit disorder. I'm just hypersensitive to boredom. That's what this is all about. I have boredom sensitivity enhancement. I would call it enhancement because, you know, in our society, it's very clear that you are supposed to be a quiet citizen who follows the law, does as he's told, pay taxes, be quiet, shut up, go to the garage, don't, don't make yourself heard. This is bizarre, of course. I find it abnormal. Our society is abnormal. This society that tells people to keep quiet and sit still and follow orders is the problem. But those few people who, are, who have not been domesticated yet, those wilder types who still have that motor, that engine driving them, or, being, or that they are the engine and they want to drive themselves, those people, I think, it, wouldn't, it seriously would not surprise me if we ever find out that the sort of people who escape from prison have ADHD 
or that slaves who successfully escaped from plantations all had ADHD. It wouldn't surprise me one bit. Or, or that explorers had higher prevalences of ADHD. Or that the people who make new discoveries have high prevalence of ADHD. It wouldn't surprise me one bit if the sort of warrior males that we know as the Vikings, the Spartans, the old Greek, the hoplites, this and that, if they all, if a lot, if a lot of them had ADHD. You know, if professional warriors have high prevalences of ADHD, none of this would surprise me. One iota it wouldn't surprise me if CEOs and CTOs, you know, chief executive level people, if they have higher prevalences of ADHD and startup founders have higher levels of ADHD. Why? Because they are precisely the sort of people who won't sit still and be quiet and listen. They want to speak. And it would also wouldn't surprise me if you knew that the sort of people who are, what's the difference between people on stage, the writers, the poets, the comedians, the dancers and the singers, the actors, the people on stage, what's the difference between them and the audience members? Guess what? It's ADHD. I think the prevalence of people on stage having ADHD is far greater than among the crowds, obviously, among the, uh, among the audiences. And, and what's wrong with that? What's wrong with having the drive to be on stage as an actor, singer, writer, poet, whatever, as a doer of things rather than as an observer or a consumer? Huh? What's wrong with that? I don't think there's anything wrong with it. This is why I will carry this badge, ADHD, as a badge of honor. I take this with pride. It means that I am a driven, creative person who wants to reach out into the world to do things. And I'm not going and I'm not going to sit still, be quiet and follow orders. Fuck you.